LSD by Justine Hudak. Hello, Mama Nation or family and visitors. Thank you so much for spending a few moments at our little internet hearth. It's time to stop my awful teasing, sorry, just that eccentric streak of mine jetting through the pocket, and give you all the facts of beautiful baby Liam's birth. Now, the nature of his birth may be controversial for some. Chad, my hubby and fifth child, we ladies like to say for those unfamiliar, and I ask only that you keep an open mind as I open my mind to you. Part one. We judge the conception of our sweet boy, Liam Sidney Dorian, as the 9th of March, 2018. During that big snowstorm outage, we remember the lights went out on us midway. Lyndon, veteran readers remember, was a newborn himself at the time. It took us a few weeks before we started to piece the clues together. Oh boy, Chelsea is super hungry. Her milk supply is dropping. I mean, gee, I hadn't gotten my period since having Lyndon. What, did I give originals of my brain cells to those three kiddos of mine instead of carbons? Boy, did I miss the mark. Could it be that I'm pregnant again? Like I had to ask. Surely not. Well, as you might have guessed, I was pregnant again. Oh my. Don't get the wrong idea, reader. Pregnancy is a dream. It's the greatest gift of womanhood, unless the Almighty blesses you with a big pear, but he didn't see me fit, so this is it. What I mean is, it's that labor process that's so darn rough. See, typically I labor a long time, sticking out a big chunk of the thing at home. I mean time, not poking out baby parts. Because we like to think whatever the stamina hormones are for getting into the fetus and vaccinate him, so to speak, against sissiness, maybe that's silly. No, only when things get really intense do we head to the hospital, then or when we run out of towels, whichever's first. But I mean to say, reader, I wanted something special for baby number four, something new. Now, we've been holding this blog post for a while, dangling its release on Instagram like real devils, hashtag sorry not sorry, because we wanted to get the story and details just right. And if you remember, Chad and I, we asked on Insta, at mama nation underscore official, can you guess what was different about Liam's birth? in the caption of the post where he's wearing that certain cheeky onesie. Well, 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 can you say impressed? Chad and I were so impressed with the manifold of you. That means lots. It was on Millie's toddler vocabulary building cards, who took note of the tie-dye pattern on Liam's onesie and correctly guessed what was different. Yes, in the end, we decided to bring little Liam into this world while his mother tripped on acid drank the Kool-Aid, used blotter paper. Can you believe some of these euphemisms? My, those acid heads do come up with them. Even now, the joy of that day and the special circumstances of his birth are commemorated in Liam's initials. 50 internet points to the reader who can remember his full name and put it in the comments. No peeking. Our son was born December 5th while his mama, me, tripped her tail off on lysergic acid diethylamide better known as LSD. It was the wildest day of my life, and I'm excited to share it with you. Part two. You may be wondering, how? Why? Huh? Well, I'll tell you my mother and Chad's mom, hey Kathy, squ sputtered a similar noise pattern. To be totally honest, they were scared witless. Then again, they're a pair of silly old ladies, sorry. I mean, eggshells and omelets are enough to send them spinning but we'll tell you just what we told those two. Some of the physical eff effects of LSD include increased blood pressure, fast heart rate, dilated pupils. Sound familiar? Boy, do I look at some of my fellow Fast Mart shoppers with fresh eyes. Really though, it's all about the physiological effects. On December 8th, 22 hours before Liam gulped his first breath, I consumed the flesh of the fungi. My first trip ever. The why is a longer story. I don't even think I totally understand why I did it. Is that weird? Guess that makes me weird. It was just that after learning I was pregnant for the fourth time, I started thinking about my three little joy bundles and then about labor and then what really made me labor hard and all that, those ice chips did jack all, brain freeze times childbirth, male doctors, am I right? 
I remembered a little about the common effects of LSD from an old roommate, and it wasn't long after that that I started thinking about this idea of giving birth with it in my back pocket. The Lord is a fine guide and all, but sometimes you can go to bed when you're sleepy, sometimes you need to pop a few pills. What I mean is, a little artifice never hurt nobody. Now, the primary change that occurs in an LSD high seems to be, as this blog will make crystal clear, in attitude and perception. Instead of being overly concerned about the pain occurring in your body, LSD should make you become involved in the process of helping the baby be born. A rhythm, shall we say, is established. The 95% of pain, which is psychological, dwindles in importance, and the new rhythm doesn't require the mental, intellectual understanding of you as the mother. Cool, huh? Uh-huh. Lovely readers, that's the technical reason we did it. And I saved the deliberation process to my family story on Instagram, which just went live if you want a glimpse into the mayhem. Wait for snippet 93 to see the decision. But also, I thought it would be like, all right, taking LSD sounds beautiful, and I thought childbirth can be beautiful too, and I wanted to try to see what would happen if I did it, you know? I thought it would be beautiful, and luckily, it was. I was just doing this thing and I was giving birth and nothing else made any difference and that's what I was doing and I did a good job evidently because it went well and it was groovy. Part three. First thing I remember about going into labor, it was a nine o'clock in the morning. I had trouble sleeping the previous evening so I smoked a lot of grass from about 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Chad got a good deal on it when he picked up the LSD. Turns out I had been in labor all night long. Evidently, I was very relaxed, so I just couldn't tell, but my ass, as it were, was grass. It was Chad who finally realized what was up when I told him that I was feeling off. I always want coffee in the morning, but that morning it didn't look good to me. I said, Chad, my stomach is feeling weird. So he took a look. Later, he told me that he could see the contractions that I couldn't feel as they came and went, and they were really close together. That's when I ate my LSD flakes on top of some leftover fajitas from a muy bueno local Mexican place. Chad took the fastest shower ever. I didn't even attempt one. Boy, did that high come fast. Instead, I just lay in the fetal position on my bed. As Chad was packing the overnight bag, he told me to put on some shoes and that he'd come and help me get down the stairs. So I made it to the bathroom where I laid down on the floor. The whole thing was totally unsterile, I guess. But all I could think about was that I was lost in the floor length infinity mirror with those makeup lights and that paisley wallpaper staring at me. I knew it was real and fake, I guess, but in my mind, all of a sudden, I was cuddling with Taylor Swift and Emma Watson. Man, was I worried they didn't like my taco seasoning breath. When every molecule of DNA in my body became sentient across all human evolution and future evolution and into distant galaxies while I crawled from neuron to neuron in my brain trying to pinpoint the exact moment I lost conscious thought. Reader, when an LSD junkie tells you all colors get stronger, they mean all colors get stronger. The toilet bowl, so white like we had just cleaned it, or like it had never known the kids everything but the kitchen sink casserole, and my perception of time was really off. I thought I had spent an hour looking at the toilet bowl. Chad later told me it couldn't have been more than five minutes. Afterwards, he was like, man, I really was worried about you for a while. Gee, honey, thanks. Honestly, time was a blur. I can't express enough that time was completely non-existent. I was in a loop forever. Contraction, baby kick, touching colors, gloopy gloop colors, squish them with my paws, I thought, to make the whole scenario stranger, I then encounter a man. It was Chad, I know now, and I am hysterically crying because I believe in my LSD stupor that I am being carried away into another universe. The trip took a peculiar turn as the man pinned me down on the bed, ow Chad, to stop me kicking around and rang an ambulance. Now, for those readers who don't know, at some point in every trip, faces are not okay to look at. They are freaky and weird and just not okay. So I'm looking at this man's face and suddenly all his skin disappears and I'm looking at a red skull and it clearly sees me freaking out and then we're both freaking out. The trip then became about accepting my mortality as a human being in the presence of this skull demon and not being scared anymore. I just stood up with all my courage and said to Skull, I'm not scared of dying. And the Skull takes me by the wrist and we walk down the stairs and out of the house. 
If I have died and this is death, I confide to it, then I will control it by laying under that tree over there. As you can guess, reader, I didn't gain the power to control death because Chad wouldn't let me go under the tree. Then something changes. We're in an ambulance now and everyone's voice is scrambled and I can't understand a word they're saying to me. I had to sign a bunch of papers, which is pretty much a blackout. I think I just scribbled some lines on each one and it got even blurrier after that. And I remember the skull and the other people in the ambulance, which by the way was huge and impressive, strapping me to a stretcher bed to keep me from bolting into the wilderness. Skull keeps telling me that I'm not going anywhere for my own safety and I tell him again, I am not scared anymore. I have to die under that tree, under that tree tree under that tree I have to die under that tree and have the earth take me death is not so bad even now I don't know how the people in the ambulance held me down I could feel that my precision positioning dodging ability and awareness were so immerse immensely enhanced the only thing I couldn't do right now was pooping which I suddenly felt like doing I do not recommend pooping on hallucinogens of any kind readers just so much wrong and no way to rationalize it I guess everyone was happy it was impossible, but it really riled me up to be stifled like that. Because as soon as the ambulance stopped, I realized I needed to get to another dimension. To get there, I thought, I must run full speed at the sliding emergency bay entrance doors and throw myself onto the ground. And the paramedics kept hold of my arms and my legs. When'd you get down there, pal? After three or four failed attempts to dimension transcend, I decided the reason I wasn't going anywhere was that I wasn't accelerating fast enough. Really, I just wasn't moving. I spit in the paramedics' faces so they would loosen their hold on me, which they do, and I charge into the entrance bay, and I am soon surrounded by several cops. I then make the decision to Jackie Chan their asses. Sadly, I have no skills. During the melee, though, I get hold of one of those shoulder walkie-talkies and request help. Help me, Obi-Wan! Help me! But Obi doesn't come, and I start to tear up at the revelation that not everything I see in the movies can be believed. I'm cuffed soon after for my own safety. Little do they know I'm sheathed by a ring of celestial energy making me indestructible, but I believe I can slip out of them if I can switch wrists with the fetus inside me. The first time I thought about Liam since leaving the house. This doesn't work on any level. Chad tells me I then begin to inform the police officers repeatedly, I will suck your dick if you let me go. He doesn't like that part of the day because I didn't offer him the same deal when I thought he was the skull demon. Excited for that conversation tonight, again. Next thing I know, I've woken up in the hallway, strapped to a new rolling bed. I can't see over my stomach, so I occupy myself looking at posters on the hospital walls. And I can't get one phrase out of my head. So I ask the nurse wheeling me a bunch of times, does lysergic acid cross the placenta? Does lysergic acid cross the placenta? Does lysergic acid cross the placenta? The nurse says something like, yes, it will enter through the bloodstream to the baby. Then she says, under her breath, but by this point the LSD has given me supersonic hearing, that it's selfish to induce this LSD effect on another being without their consent. I disagree, but I don't have my fists free to punch that opinion out of her, so I stay pretty still. Soon, they get me to a big room with these bright headlights on the ceiling, and the doctor tells me the baby is under stress. Now, on the side of hospital beds, they give you a button to push if you start feeling pain. So I shoot the fetus a couple squirts and proceed to tell the doctor that Liam has been helped. But the doc said no, we needed to get Liam out as quickly as possible. He said that they were going to use forceps to pull him out, which were freezing cold and gave me this feeling that I wanted to be naked. Didn't want anything to touch me, so I squinched my hips to muscle out the clamps and the doc kept saying, good, good, good pushing. I just wanted to be free. But then I was still freezing and I was pushing all my core heat to the area where the clamps were and so now I'm even colder. Must have screamed out, I'm freezing because soon they were putting blankets on me. Or pillows under me. Don't remember. I'm pretty sure I told the nurse I loved her but then I felt so smothered I couldn't move so I spat on her hands and cursed her children and grandchildren and I thought to myself, gosh, this is going to go on till midnight. But Chad came in with those goddamn ice chips and transmitted to me telepathically, are you kidding? You're going to have him in no time. You know, speaking of Chad, they told me I would want him to rub my back and things like that, but I didn't. Mostly I just wanted to see what was going on, so I sat up a little for a better look. The head started to come out and I sat up even straighter. I want to see this. I want you to see this, I told everyone in the room. I told the nurse to go find more people so we could all look. Part four. 
I don't know what happened next exactly, but from then on it was beautiful. And the birth itself was beautiful. It was the greatest. I can't remember any pain at all. It was just insane. It was so beautiful. We have some photos of us right after the birth. He was right there on the bed with me and I was just looking at him. The whole room was still so bright, but I went from seeing very beautiful lime green clouds in the ceiling and strong colors everywhere to my son. And a radio somewhere was on and I could hear it. But I could also kind of see it, like it was playing on my son's face. With the photos though, you can see how I'm smiling and you can see that I'm alive and alert and aware. That's the way mothers feel after birth in the animal kingdom, I know. The doctor said he thought the LSD made me more like an animal, more like a human animal. And I said to him, it sure did, it sure did, it sure did. Last, I remember the drive home with Liam there, and I could see the stars more clearly than ever.